So how do we do that? Uh, da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Uh, can you confirm that my screen is, is fine? Can you see the slide? Yeah. Quite fine. Okay. Cool. It's okay. So I'm right on time. So I'm not going to waste uh, any more minutes and I'm going to start. So once again, uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ish uh, Sukan. I'm from Mauritius. I work in the media company here. And uh, I must say, this is my third time doing a presentation in Open SUSE conference. And the first time doing a presentation uh, at a liberal office uh, conference. So uh, just be patient with me. So yeah, uh, this presentation is going to be about uh, about Podman, but it's going to be very introductory level. Uh, so if somebody knows nothing about uh, containers, this is the place to be, uh, because that's what we're going to look at, and then we're going to head towards uh, uh, Podman. So uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. containers. I usually tell people that before you start learning about computers, start learning about uh, uh, container management, be it with uh, a Podman, with Docker, or any other container engine, uh, do something. Go ahead and read about Linux namespaces, because these are the building blocks of uh, containers. If you really want to be comfortable understanding containers, how they perform, what they are made of, then do find uh, uh, something to read about uh, from the internet. There are plenty of documentation online. But uh, in this presentation, in a nutshell, what I'm going to, to, to show is that um, uh, if you go about it to find uh, Linux namespaces, there are basically eight namespaces that you need to know. Well, in total, there are eight namespaces, and that's all that you need to know. And what are namespaces? Uh, well, uh, again, in a net nutshell, uh, these namespaces allow the segregation of resources. That is, uh, resources such as CPU, memory, file system, etc. Uh, they are segregated in such a way that some process can see uh, a certain set of resources and others cannot. And if you want to play around, uh, just look at this slide on the bottom left. There's a Linux command called uh, Unshare. Uh, read about it, and you can use it to. It's a small com program uh, which allows you to separate namespaces, uh, to run a program with a separate namespaces, a namespace than its parent. Uh, staying on the topic of namespaces, there's one more command that I would like to share with you, and it is lsns. So you have your running Linux system right now. You do not have uh, any container engine running, but you want to learn about uh, namespaces, how they function, what they do. Or all you have to do is just type lsns, and you will find the list uh, uh, of all the current, uh, currently available namespace on your system. OK, this is just a brief. So you will find plenty of documentation talking about, uh, about namespaces. Uh, read and then you will be ready for your adventure about containers so yes when your container uh, when your adventure starts with containers uh, you will find that uh, there are plenty of container runtimes container engines out there you will hear about container d about docker about casa containers lx lx3 many more and now with uh, with the hype of kubernetes it has become even more complex for somebody to just start using containers and see all the complex things uh, that people are doing with that. So the list here is not in, alphab uh, is in alphabetical order. It's not in pri priority order. So just go around, uh, do some Googling, and yeah, read about them. Uh, again, before we come to Podman, I would like to talk to you about uh, what a container is made of. So uh, when I usually talk to, to people, especially developers, uh, I come from a system admin background. So I have the tendency to try to understand how something works rather than just you know typing a command and it works. And I'm, I clap my hands and say, hey, it works. No, I try to understand how it works. So before you start using containers, it's very good uh, 
to do some background research, to do some reading and some experiments to understand what a container is made of. So here I show, I share with you a small uh, program called Scopio, uh, which is very handy if you wanna if you wanna really look inside and peek inside of containers. So Scopio allows you to inspect a, a remote container, uh, a remote container image. Sorry. Uh, later in the slides, we will we will see about what is the meaning of a local image registry and what a remote registry. Right now, just understand that uh, if somebody says, "Hey, okay, uh, pull uh, an open source leap container image on your system and run a container," but before doing that, you wanna you wanna look uh, you wanna know you wanna find more information about the container, you can use the Scopio inspect command. So uh, the style is like this. You type Scopio, you type inspect, you type Docker, because here Docker is not the program, but it's the transport. So uh, you say Docker, and then you specify the path of the uh, container image. In this case, OpenSUSE lib is the path on docker.io slash OpenSUSE slash lib. Uh, well, again, I might sound a bit uh, confusing uh, when I'm saying this, but in the later slides, you will find that this is uh, something really easy to understand. So when you, you inspect, uh, let me just pull, uh, okay, I just hope that you can see this as well, and it's not very small, so I'm going to make it a bit big. All right, so let us see what happens if you do this. Uh, okay, you do Docker, you say, open SUSE and you say leave. So if my internet connection is good, you should get the details in just a few seconds. Okay, so this is the kind of information that you get. You will find all the repo tags. Uh, so all the different uh, uh, versions of this container image are available at doc.io open SUSE leave. And uh, if you do not ever specify the version, by default, it will, sorry, by default, it will use the latest tag, like you can see here. So how do you use Scopio to dig into a container image? All right, the next three commands of how we're going to do it. First, let's say we want to dig into the Nginx uh, container image. So we create a directory, call it Nginx, we use Scopio and we say copy. So it's going to copy the remote container image into the directory Nginx. Next, we just type a simple command tree Nginx to see how it is organized uh, inside. So here we see a bunch of long characters not knowing what they are. Actually, each of these lines here are compressed layers and each of these layers contain several files and directories inside of them. So use the below commands and decompress the different layers and peek in, inside of that. You, 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 you will be surprised to see that a container image is nothing more than just a bunch of directories and files. But those files and directories are, are going, to be very uh, going to be very familiar to you if you're used to Linux systems, uh, if you're used to the Linux file system hierarchy standard. So this is a little experiment that I advise you to do. And uh, now let us come to point one. So after your experiments, now that you know what a container is made of, what are Linux namespaces, how the magic of containers happen, that is using a bunch of directories and files and namespaces, containers are born. So, in the earlier uh, slide, we saw that there are a lot of, um, a few dozens of container engines and container runtimes that will allow you to, to create, run, and manage containers. Podman is one of them. And uh, in, uh, in the bottom, you will see two commands here. The first one is very simple. I'm just using Podman to run uh, an Nginx container. And here, I'm doing very something very simple. So I say run if the if there is no nginx container image on my system. What Podman is going to do? It is going to query my container registry, which is defined in a configuration file, and then it will say, "Hey, I need the latest uh, 
container image of Nginx, and it's gonna pull it. And here it's gonna run it and expose uh, the containers port 80 to my local systems 8080 uh, port. And when it's running, you, you won't say anything on, on your terminal. It will just give you the prompt again because I've said, uh, uh, I've I put minus D there. Minus D means it, to run the container in a detached mode, which means once the, con uh, the command completes successfully, it's gonna return to the prompt. So then I can just do curl localhost 8080 and I will see the HTML code from the default static page of Nginx. So very basic. People who are from a, a Docker background uh, might find these options and flags uh, very similar, uh, very common. All right, so where does Podman store information? This is a very handy command, just type Podman info and you will get a bunch of uh, information where uh, are the storage configuration, where are the files of the different containers stored, like uh, on, on the right side in the screenshot, you can see and the last line is volume path. So this is where uh, if you're going to uh, do Podman, you're going to create a volume. So this is where the volumes are going to be stored. So this is a very handy one. And uh, now coming back to, to what I was saying about container image registries. So if you are running Perlman for the first time, it's gonna check on your system whether a container image is, uh, exists. For example, if I'm running Nginx, it's gonna check. Uh, do I have the Nginx uh, image on my local repository? If I do not, I'm going to contact a, a remote uh, regis registry and see whether they have the images. So, where do we define these registries? You go into etc or containers registries.com, you find the line where it is, it says registries.search. There you are, you have registries equal to, and between the square brackets, you are going to define all the remote registries that you want to query whenever you type podman search, podman run, or podman pull, like you see here. If we do a run, it's, it's going to pull the image and then create a container from that. If you do a Podman pull, for example, Nextcloud, it's uh, first it's going to check whether there is uh, a Nextcloud uh, container image on registry.opensource.org. If not, then it's going to query docker.io and see whether there is a Nextcloud uh, container image there, and it's going to pull it. Now that you have pulled uh, your images, you want to see the list of images in your local registry. You just have to type Podman images, very simple. Okay, uh, a few more things about uh, image registries is that uh, earlier I said that uh, when you're pulling an image, you can, if you do not specify the registry, it's going to check one by one, depending on how you have defined your registries here. Or else you can, in your command itself, you can specify the name of the registry. In this case, it's registry.opensource.org. And I'm specifying which a version of the container image to pull. In this case, if I do not put in, if I do not put anything by default, it's gonna use latest. Or else, like we saw, uh, oh sorry, uh, that was here. Like we saw, if I use Scorpio, I inspect the image, I can see all the repo tags, and then uh, whenever I'm pulling the image, I can specify like. Like here in the Nginx, I can give the definition, uh, sorry, not the definition. I can specify the, the tag from the information that I found using Scopio. All right. Uh, well, the last line was just about that. Um, okay. These are common uh, some common options and flags uh, whenever you want to run uh, uh, a container and you want to mount a volume. And uh, I'm looking at the time at the same time. Da, 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 da. I've already used 15 minutes. So I'm going to go pretty quick on this one. So anyway, I'm going to share the slides so you guys can have a look at this. So you will notice that the Podman options and flags are pretty similar to what we have uh, with Docker. And uh, a bunch of more information here, which is very easy to find if you to put man dash dash help. Uh, what I'm going to, to very quickly go about is understanding pods. So yes, the good feature about pods 
uh, about Podman, which you won't find in Docker, is this. Uh, with uh, Podman, you're also able to create a pod. Now, what is a pod? A pod is uh, you define, uh, you segregate, let's say, a set of resources, and then all the containers that you're going to create within this pod, they are going to share the same namespace. So for example, uh, here I'm creating a pod and I'm going to name it web app and I'm going to expose my port 80, uh, map my port 80 with my, uh, my host 8080. So all the containers that I'm going to create in, inside this pod, they will be sharing the same uh, network namespace, the same file system namespace and everything. So in the two, uh, the second and third command, you see that I'm running also an Nginx, which will be accessible uh, from my host on port 8080, and I'm running a MariaDB. Now, when my Nginx, uh, let's say I have some application running in, in that container and it needs to talk to the database, uh, MariaDB database, I don't need to communicate with it over uh, uh, a remote IP address or something like that. I can simply call on localhost and port 3306 of MariaDB right. server, and it's going to be accessible. Yes, I know you're going to say time's up, right? I think somebody was talking. Guys, did somebody try to stop me? Don't think so. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I heard a ghost. You should just wrap it up. Uh, yes, I, I'm wrapping up on, on, on this particular slide. So yeah, so this is the one cool feature that I was saying that Podman has that you won't find with, with, with Docker unless you're, you're trying to use something more complicated. So you can create a pod, you can put as many containers uh, as you need inside that pod, and all those containers are going to use the same uh, namespaces, and it's very secure, very easy to use. So guys, like I said, uh, I've crossed my 15 minutes. Uh, the rest of these, uh, there was nothing much. I'm going to share uh, these slides uh, in the chat. And if you have any questions, anything uh, that you would like to ask, uh, just leave me a tweet. Uh, I will leave some details in the chat. Thank you very much. And uh, keep enjoying the first day of Oslo 2020.